Hello peeps, this is my highly anticipated solo shuffle DH guide. You have timestamps down below to skip to or return to any segment as you like. And I hope you enjoy this video. So first off, pros, cons of the DH. The pros, amazing sustained and burst damage, great mobility, great survivability, the entire range of CC, easy to pick up, modern class, no fluff, and I should also add it has one of the best cleaves in the game. As far as the cons are considered, weak to CC, no real CC immunity other than uh, Glimpse talent, or ways to counter CC attempts. Weak to roots, only two abilities that affect teammates. Your damage can get countered since the class is very easy to understand. So that was just a basic overview of the pros and the cons of playing a Demon Hunter. Talent builds. These are the talents that I use that I think you will find used with most used with some minor exceptions maybe. Personally, I wouldn't touch anything here, but there is a few things you can actually move around if you want to min-max the situation. I just want to make it clear that I personally almost never change these and will only change the PvP talents. So as far as the talents that you can kind of move around, uh, on the Havoc side, I would not touch anything really, um, unless you, I mean, if you're not gonna get focused down, you can move Netherwalk, put it into Burning Hatred, but I would still keep it and use it. I think it's uh, overall better to have a defensive, another defensive cooldown than to have a little bit more fury regeneration. On the Demon Hunter side, there is some stuff you can actually move around. There's basically one free point that you have that you can kind of move around and put into different points which you think you would need. I keep it into Swallowed Anger, you can put it into Fellfire Haste, I think that's also a really good choice. Um, so there's like a lot of different choices you can do, you can put it into Darkness here. You have an Extended Darkness. As far as the PvP talents are considered, I use the Tainment or Reverse Magic most of the time. Reverse Magic I use, usually just have Baseline. Then I switch to the Tainment if there's nothing really I can reverse. Rain from above is also another good choice. Um, I would only really use it versus like a double melee comp, but it can be like an additional cooldown that you can use. And it can also do a ton of damage if, if it's an open map. Sigil of Mastery is also another choice. Um, it just really depends. I did forget to say, right, that you can use Misery of Defeat depending on if you want to do more damage or improve Siege of Mastery if you want to have less cooldown. And that would be it as for the talents. Now we come to the gearing part of the video. Secondary stat priority would be Versa, Mastery, followed by Crit and Haste. Not much, not much to say there. You want to have as much Versa and Mastery as you can, followed by, of course, Crit and Haste with minimizing as, uh, haste as much as you can, because it's your worst performing stat. Crit is just not as good as in PvP as it is in PvE, so having some haste is still good to make your rotation be smoother. Since I don't have a 4 set still, I can't really speak on the strength of it. I see some people running it, some people only running a 2 set. I would definitely go for the 2 set. World PvP items used to be necessary, but as we make tier the set items now, those have their own stat weight anyways. So there's no need to worry. Just get mastery everywhere you can. As far as crafted items, uh, I personally have the boots and the helm, but I'm currently only using the boots since I have um, a tier set on my head. But you can also get the elemental lariat plus gem and crafted ring with mastery, as they are best in slot. Now the most important part of the video, as in my opinion, is the rotation, as I always, as I say in my previous guide video, making yourself just be able to put out the damage without thinking about it is the most important thing. If you played a DH in the past, the new rotation can feel kinda clunky, but once you get used to it, it's quite easy. The baseline priority is Blade Dance, Throw Glaive and Chaos Strike. You basically only cast Chaos Strike if you're full on Fury and you have no Glaive stacks or Blade Dance. You want to be using your Emulation Aura on CD and dashing periodically to get a damage buff from Momentum. Emulation Aura is actually a huge part of your damage, so be careful not to uh, use it while being kited. Now for the burst rotation, and with DH there is quite a few different variations, since you have quite a few different kind of cooldowns. So first starting off with a basic I-beam into Essence Break uh, combo, or the Essence Break combo as, you, as I refer to it. This is your bread and butter, this should be combined with your CC to create pressure. You can follow the add-on in the lower right corner for the exact inputs. The 
The combos now increase as you add cooldowns into them. This would be a hunt plus essence break combo. A combo I like to do after the enemy has used some cooldown. This is since I don't like committing hunt in the opener and I prefer to commit metamorphosis. Then use hunt as a finisher once the enemies don't have defensive cooldowns or are low HP. This now would be a full CD burst rotation, I would never do this in PvP, I would strictly save this for PvE, unless you're maybe like getting a full combo on the entire enemy team with a hunt, it's just easy for enemies to click a defensive and negate most of the damage. I should also state that you should make sure you got a good amount of fury before you commit your stun and start using your cooldowns. So there's a few tips and tricks that really you should abuse. First tip is trying to combine your burst window with demon soul buff. I mean, do I have to explain really? It's it's a 20% damage buff, it's basically Paladin Wings. That's why you will see a lot of the H dancing around the first a few moments of the arenas. Fishing for the demon proc to maximize the burst potential in the opener. We will now talk about Vengeful Retreat related stuff. Most basic combo usage will come from a few regeneration and resetting initiative by using it together with Fell Blades to stay on target and generate more fury. If you're having this combo fail, it's because you're casting Fell Blades too quickly and it's not been turned into a dash at that point. You can also use Glide either by double jumping or having it bound when you're close towards the end of the animation. This will put you in range for Fell Rush or I Beam. Otherwise, if if you simply vengeful retreat and use one of these, you won't actually reach the target. You can also make up for this by walking through your target and using vengeful retreat while on the opposite side of them. Preferably you want to use glide as your mobility is on a separate global, so you're able to chain stun with the vengeful retreat away into a stun, into a glide, into a whatever. You can also extend the duration of glimpse by using it of a higher elevation point or by jumping before you glimpse and then using glide plus fail rush. This will catch people off guard, a lot of people they will commit CC thinking your vengeful retreat is over. It also will um, prolong the damage reduction, so there's a few reasons to do it. Canceling the hunt is another trick. I personally look away from the target to cancel it. This is a mega mega cringe and you should just make a stop casting macro with one of your most used abilities. Something like blade dance or fell blades. This is mainly done either because an enemy popped the defensive cooldown or to bait the defensive cooldown. Use your mobility as a defensive tool. So many people forget that you can simply kite the damage. If you're having downtime on your damage and CC and the enemy uses CDs or something like that, use your mobility to kite away since you will be the one being pressured. Since all your defensives are percentage based effects, make sure you use them before the damage hits or as it hits. The H has no shields, no insta heals. Sure you might get a demon proc, but your defensives get most value when used to prevent pressure, not once pressure has been made. Make sure you're using the whole arsenal of CC that you have. Incap into fear, stun into fear on the healer, AoE stunning multiple targets, restunning the target that has no defensives that can be used while CC'd, chaining this CC with burst windows for maximum pressure. Regarding the hunt, I personally use it as a finisher, or if I see that uh, I can hit multiple targets with it, you can use it in the opener, especially if you got a demon soul for additional pressure to make the enemy play from the back foot, but I just prefer to use it as more of a precision strike. Now bring all those things together and that would be how I look at the current DH class, how I think you should play it. If you're looking for full soul shuffle games of the age i have quite a few of those all out already and more coming soon if you have any specific questions regarding countering classes or specific scenarios feel free to comment down below like and subscribe all those things the youtuber wants you to do and have a nice day